Alright, what's up y'all, it's like a fan here. As you can see by today's video, we're here to ask, is there a skill gap to post scoring in NBA 2K25? So, off the top, I would definitely say yes. People that play like my homie Tonic, where it's a lot of post tops, post fades, and just, you know, actually having crafty uh, footwork and finesse and stuff like that, and understanding shot timings, I definitely agree, yes. That type of post scoring has a skill gap, we can all agree to that. Anything that has to come with, you know, timing a shot and actually creating openness and space and stuff like that is definitely a skill gap however you can see this type of matchup right here where we have a 99 post control and then you know me with only an 87 post control i'm still getting the job done a ton and we're here to show that in today's video but like this build right here 99 post 95 strength 92 close shot now you might wonder why are you playing us a 6-9 post score on the 1v1 court well as you can see i am also a 6-10 small forward and the cheese to this is the fact that if you are a small forward shooting guard or point guard you'll get matched up with other small forward shooting guards or point guards in the proving grounds 1v1 court so let's talk about a build like these being on the ones court does this actually take any skill my simple answer no not at all this is the easiest thing i've ever done on 2k you can see the one loss that i had was a desync at the beginning of the game and that was like a week ago when i believe the dashboards out of games and proving grounds maybe actually were giving you losses and this this loss that i had was actually just one that was at the very beginning of the game and desynced me from it so technically i'm 72 and 72 on this right here <laughs> and it's brain dead it's the easiest thing i've ever done however i will say i do still get a lot of matchups that are like the one in this game that you're going to see or another gameplay that's in this video that you'll see as well where we're getting a lot of these high interior d high post scoring uh like post control close shot standing dunk type players as well so i'm here to just address whether any of this actually takes skill in the very first shot attempt you're going to see i hit him with a drop step i thought i was going to work him i don't and i make a red with no timing did that take any skill absolutely not bro I mean, that's insane. <laughs> and mind you, again, my close shot's not super high. It's only like, you know, 84 or something like that. My post control, not super high either, 87. And you're going to see me do a lot of this stuff where we're hitting him with the drop steps, trying to stun him and go straight up with the basket and just hope for the best in a lot of cases. Now, as far as stopping it, I think there absolutely is a skill gap to the defensive end of this. And granted, like I'm doing, you know, switching my ball hand right there, thinking that's actually a good maneuver where I'm kind of shifting his leverage a little bit, trying to make it so that where the drop step is on the left and he's trying to play that side, I, you know, pivot over to the other side, but to no avail, obviously, as you can see. And I know a lot of you guys are going to be maybe questioning like, oh, like this looks so sad. You can see right there, like I go for the drop step, boom, mash him because I see he jumps and now we're just getting into dead zone area. Look, the point of this video is to address this exact topic and, and talk about and, you know, speculate whether this actually takes any skill or not. You can see right there, another kind of long drop step animation. And now he's just pump faked and stuff like that. We're getting him into the dead zone. This is where it's a really tough spot to play the defense. And again, this is where it's like I get a different drop step animation that goes a little bit deeper into the paint. Now, this one right here is just so mashable. Like he has to jump. There's no way he can afford to play hands up D because he's pinned between me and the basket. And that's just going to be a terrible spot for him to be. So, Again, we're, we're already up to an 8-0 lead off me just taking a couple really stupid lays or just being able to just mash pump fake him and stuff like that. And I remember back in 2K23, this discussion was also had, whether mashing actually took any skill or not. And you can even see, I'd argue on sometimes the defensive aspect of this, it's even still kind of brain dead. Because this dude gets completely like taken out of the play. I go up with this after he pump fakes and I get like some 180 turnaround uh, close shot where the dude just gets a really good like continuation of the pogo jumps but on this one we finally get the o-board you know get the shot to go 10-0 but we had this discussion in 2k23 about whether the mashing took skill or not and a lot of people argued that it did but it was people that were doing it and were biased you know i'd like to think anything to do with mashing of just like constantly doing this uh you know drop step into going up straight up with it it doesn't take skill but that's the unfortunate part of it too is that look at this we, we're out here missing opens like this even for that matter and this is with 84 close shot like that's a great take right there but the problem is how do you balance it or patch this or you know make it like respectable if you don't miss stuff like that so now let's talk about the defensive end of it right he just got a yellow and i missed an open so two shots in general that like really didn't seem like they were really terrible shot attempts but because layups are very spotty in this game and he had great interior defense i wasn't able to hit it right there you know i get a good shot contest of just playing my hands up then into the jump and we get a very tight i get a body up right there as well where i'm trying to do a little too much you can see i'm trying to like get to an offensive rebound because obviously i'm not going to make any mid-range shots on this build so 
you know, it's ugly gameplay for sure. Trust me. So much to the point where, as you can see, he doesn't even want to go with the post anymore. He's just resorting to the mid range shot, which, hey, that's a good shot attempt to be had. I don't have it on my build, so I can't resort to it either. So I don't really have even the luxury, I would even call it, to be able to do something like that. So, right here, you can see I'm getting really bodied up on him, but 99 post control, you have to stay out of the way. You do not want to be hit with any of those drop step animations. So he went with the post hook, ideally in that regard where I was playing really low on him, but I baited him enough to actually get back up to it. So there's a lot of stuff with post scoring that you really have to be very mindful of where you're defending them as a defender. You have to make sure you're not too bodied up on them because you don't want to get hit with the post spins and the drop steps and stuff like that and get completely taken out of the play. But you also don't want to be so low to the point where they're going to give up a wide open hook shot or like post fade or anything like that because those are still very hittable as well. Now right here, you're probably thinking, Laker, why are you dribbling around so much? You're being real clunky with it. Well, guess what? Self lob, baby. <laughs> so, I mean, hey, that's at least somewhat crafty. You got to respect it a little bit. You know, I had to kind of just resort to that once I ended up picking my dribble up. But as you can see, you know, got to start just dumbing this down a little bit because that's the sad part about this, right? On this build, I have 89 driving dunk. I got a decent ball handle. I got the ability to get to the hoop. But the problem is, it, there's no point in doing a meter dunk or like a driving dunk period when you can just take them below the basket and it's a much more reliable shot but now let's talk about this that's two very tights in a row that i've got on him with 88 interior defense while being 610 to his 69 i know being 610 isn't the best counter to being like guarding other true blue post scores that are 73 72 but i promise you if you look at the you know 1v1 court and you don't see people just close shot post fade spamming each other it's gonna be a lot of this nonsense where it's people just spamming drop steps into just you know paint mash on each other and getting contest after contest after contest because height is so important in terms of stopping them and people that have at least a respectable interior defense and aren't getting hit with those drop steps or post spins and getting their ankles broke like how right there on that last play you saw me get a good post spin on him and it got me down into position right here you can see i'm in position but here's the thing i'm not going up without a drop step because i'm able to at least shift him out of the way with the drop step like me to just mash him and put him below the basket and be pump fake pump fake pump fake without any shifting of like actually moving his body with the drop step would be pointless it just wouldn't work so or you can say i go for the pivot i try and go for the drop step didn't get it so now he's going to be able to defend me really well but once again back on defense with this and he only has two points and it was on a standing mid-range shot mind you and he has 99 post control and all that stuff is there any point to it absolutely not because you could argue the skill gap is he's not doing things well but as you can see he's got his layup timing on as well now that's this other sad part is do you want to argue that having layup timing on is like something that negates the skill gap it makes it so you are a bad player if you have your layup timing on because i've seen i've seen so many people talk about that in the videos where they're talking about like this dude has layup timing on he's clearly a bot is that, isn't that the saddest thing you ever heard that someone has their layup timing on so that means they're a bad player <laughs> it's just the saddest thing bro because obviously you know i'm able to make a lot of shots with the, with the timing off and he probably would have been been able to for that matter but man i'm not gonna lie there are a lot of times that you're looking at right here where i'm getting very tights on that stuff with just 88 interior d look at that jump boom we're getting a very tight on that right here on the second one this is a light pressure fellas like this is me just being below the basket and late putting my hand up and I get a yellow on that, a light pressure. Right here, we're just putting our hands up again and I get another very tight, just because I'm an inch taller than him with high interior defense. You can't argue that that's unstoppable as long as you have the right type of interior defense on your build. So, is there a skill gap to this? Absolutely not. This is the most brain dead thing I've ever done. I just hold LT, tap my X button and just go up. But is there a build gap to it? Absolutely. If you have a high enough interior defense, you'll be holding people to 0 for 6 on the paint like this and he only made one shot and it was in the mid-range and mind you like i said i've played against a lot of builds like this on the ones court where it's not people taller than me because i don't get matched up with seven foot plus builds or like 611 plus but other 610 post scores that i've seen with this exact same ideology that i went into this 1v1 court with i've seen other people try this and you already saw my record i haven't lost a single game on here all right so into the second game you're gonna see i'm being guarded by a six foot ten build that also has like 93 block you can see he's ranked uh gold just like i am as well he has the same type of play style on here you know 610 with a high standing dunk a high block close shot strength all that you might be wondering why my ratings are so low i'm a little bit more widespread i, I wanted to put my prim d up and 
and stuff like that to, you know, be able to actually guard guards a little bit and, you know, respectably. And I have some stupid investment on mine with driving dunk, but hey, to be fair, I guess I get one right there as well. But yeah, 89 driving dunk, let's just say, doesn't go a very long way on this court because why even do it when <laughs> you could just take people down to the paint who have high block and actually get to some decent takes with the drop steps and stuff. So this one, however, you're going to see is me just showcasing that I actually end up scoring on this guy quite a bit, even though he has good interior defense and stuff like that. So I'm not even here to push my narrative and force that upon you guys. I'm actually here to just show a couple gameplays of me playing against other post scores and see what you think as far as what maybe your thought process correlates with my gameplay and maybe to see what your guys' gameplay on the game uh, brings to the table as well. Because as you can see, I kind of like put him below the basket, boom, standing dunk. Now, that's 90 standing with gold rise up, putting in work on a guy that's putting his hands up and, you know, isn't able to go for the jump or anything like that. So that was just a good take right here as well. He's a little too slow, you know, playing a little flat-footed LT defense, and I'm able to just kind of sneak by him for the standing, for the driving dunk. It's obviously nothing to do with like being brain dead. It was just a good take because he was playing pretty, I would call it bad defense per se. But anyway, tracking with the post spin, nothing doing there. Obviously trying to shift him with a drop step. And now right there, it's like, wouldn't you think that to be a good take per se? Like, it, I mean, I, I would definitely believe that when we shift him out of the way on this drop step right here, and now we have him kind of crabbed, essentially. How's this a contest? You know, it's like, I, I don't really vibe with that. That's a yellow. We're, we're pump faking again, trying to get him to go up. He almost would have got a contest right there. I would think it actually was pretty close, but you know, we're sitting here at 10-0 <laughs> and it's just straight nonsense that we've been doing for the most part. I mean, yeah. And like I told y'all, I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm locked in here for sure. Like in these games, trying to make sure that I'm able to actually get to decent takes right there. Drop step. He's playing hands up D. It's not doing anything for him too much, but He's not doing the type of ball that I would really suggest, to be honest with you. Again, he's playing hands up D, kind of getting ran by, and it's just bad ball for him. But you have to avoid getting drop stepped in these cases. You can't just sit there and like just be bodied up on him the whole time, make make it so obvious that you're gonna be able to just get shifted with stuff like that, or like this post spin, for instance. He, however, has great block and interior D and stuff like that. So it's a little, gonna be a little bit hard harder to just, you know, push him out of the way with the post spins and stuff and get ankle breaker animations on him. So what we have to do is get below the basket and get those like mashes in the uh, like pump fakes and stuff like that into the dead zone rather than hoping that I'm just gonna animate him properly and everything. But I mean, dude, like, come on. We gotta know about the defensive outlook on this, bro. You can't be bodied up like giving me blow buys and stuff six points for free off absolutely nothing and you know that you could also argue that that's still a nice aspect of the i would even call it the defensive skill gap of this of just not doing dumb things man and giving up freebies on the baskets but anyway we're going and shifting him with this right here uh, don't even ask me what in the world is going on with this stuff because again that's no skill involved because i'm just doing nonsense bro and we're getting it to work against a high block and high interior so again I know I'm shifting through a lot of different narratives with this video, but that's the whole point is to talk about how I don't really have a true opinion on this because look at this. I mean, we got into the dead zone, but it's like, I know my close shot isn't going to get him. However, then I just get some stupid backwards drop step that I went the wrong way with and went up with the close shot. That's from like super far away on some far range close shot. And we just get that to go because my timing's off and it didn't matter if I mistimed it <laughs> right here. I just get into a bad spot. So now we can finally show you me playing some defense on him. So we're bodied up a little bit early or keyword early. Now I obviously have to back up. So boom, post spins coming. I'm getting away from that. Once again, post spins coming. I'm getting away from that drop step. I want to make sure I'm on that back shoulder with it. Boom. We're getting a red. It's like, yeah, that's brain dead, but it takes a, it takes some skill to guard in my opinion, you know? So because that's one of my only few defensive possessions. I want to show you my point. Post spin, you want to be on the back shoulder. You don't want to give anything up. Now, technically, to be fair, you also still want to guard this front shoulder post spin, but most people want to do it toward the open side of the court. They don't want to just force this into this area where it's really bad for you. Either way, what you want to do is back up a little bit into this area where you're not giving up the ground entirely. You don't want to retreat all the way to the paint, but you want to be backed up enough to the point where you can meet them on the next, uh, I would say, Let's say once they get out of that post spin animation, you know, whether it was to this shoulder or this shoulder to the left or to the right, you want to make sure that you're not giving up all the ground, but you don't want to be bodied up where you can get your ankles broken either. So here we are once again. And like I said, backing up, make sure you're not giving up all the ground, but you want to at least retreat a little bit. Now drop step, drop steps only work toward this back shoulder right here or toward the ball hand, if you will. You never want to guard a drop step to this open side of the court over to the left. 
it's so rare that they're going to be good they don't really animate very well the only time that the front shoulder drop step or you know the open uh side drop steps really work is if it's like really good for use a situational use to get into that area but like most people want to do a drop step to that back shoulder right there and it, then boom just go straight up because that's what the brain dead thing is to do is to animate them hope for the best thing and then that's all it is really is just again a little bit of a hoping and praying sort of situation <laughs> so right here however you can see i'm actually getting into a little bit of a mash once again but either way he's able to contest that really good so back on defense again i actually got done the exact same way as him i gave up a blow by right there he gets a standing dunk even though it was like kind of moving technically so you could argue it as a driving dunk but either way very clearly a standing dunk animation so let's get back to the defense you want to play early high however you never really want to get beat on the post spins or drop steps so here we are in the back shoulder now I'm just walling up you can see I'm actually playing hands up but he's spamming pump fakes to try and get me to jump because that's just how this game works and that's a really really whack thing about the game to be fair but just want to take you through the process of this because there actually is something about this that you need to know in terms of playing the defense on it so right here like I told y'all, I'm playing hands up D after the drop step. So I'm, I'm all positioning right now. I'm not worried about the contest at all because honestly, no one goes from having their LT held to going straight up with the basket unless it's maybe they like squared up and then boom, they're going to get a standing dunk, right? But what you really want to do is play that back shoulder like I told y'all. And now you can see that I got that uh, kind of like area condensed on him. And now I'm just between him and the basket with him, him not being dead zone. Now I'm playing hands up D, but here's the deal. The pump fakes will force you to jump sometimes with the hands up D. So what you want to do is have your right stick held up right now, but obviously that's going to force you to jump sometimes. So instead of still holding your right stick up through this whole animation, I would suggest let go of your right stick and hold it up again. And what it'll do is boom, you'll go instantly back into hands up defense. And yes, it may make you jump sometimes on these pump fakes like you see right here. But again, same outlook applies. I'm letting it go and putting my hands up again. And as you can see, we get a yellow with, you know, him getting a terrible layup animation. But sometimes stuff like that happens, bro. That's why I say it's not a lot of skill gap. It's, it's a little bit of RNG, if you ask me. And I mean, sometimes you're just hoping for the best. And that's why this is a really whack play style and a whack place to play right now is because you just have people doing stuff like this. And imagine how much worse it is when it's on point guards and stuff. So that's why it's a toxic build. It's a toxic way to finesse the system of making a small forward. So you could argue that's pretty toxic, Laker. Why would you show that? Well, at the end of the day, we've had this discussion a couple of days ago. You know, is it on me to mask and, you know, masquerade the shortcomings of the game and stuff like that? I don't know. It's up to you guys to decide, I guess, a little bit. But either way, we hit the plus 4% on the gold bar right here. And here we are stopping at 99% toward hitting platinum. But this is actually my last game ever of playing 1v1 court. And that's what you saw my record stop at was the 72 and 1 that you saw at the very end right there. Because honestly, it's just a really boring way to play. Again, there's no skill gap involved. There's really no uh, strategy involved either. And that's what I really dislike about it in the first place is the lack of strategy, right? So what me and Tanner do on this twos court right here in the Proving Grounds is like very strategic based, if you ask me, where, you know, we have to do a lot of pick and roll and stuff like that. If they get the lock switch or like against double locks, like a lineup like this, it's really tough for us. You know, we have to really finesse our way to a lot of baskets and have a hard time on here. Again, I mean, two six sevens with a lineup like this is very tough. It leads to a lot of hoping that shots like this work out in our favor. And unfortunately, in some cases, you know, having to actually time jump shots, it doesn't work out in your favor sometimes. And against locks, you're getting reds on stuff like that. Now, here's the issue, right? I didn't know if I ever wanted to talk about this in video, but knowing that some people are going to say that a lot of things to, to do with post scoring are taking skill, you know, and I'm just being a hater and stuff like that. Let's talk about this. So you can see early on, really bad take by them, you know, go up the dunk. But let, let's just cut to the chase and talk about what's really toxic on this game. So you can see the point guard right here, the uh, Fennec dude, uh, whatever his name is that he goes by. I want you to really pay attention. I want you to really, really pay attention to what's going on right here. Bump. That's probably an adrenaline loss. Another bump. Maybe an adrenaline loss. This one, very likely an adrenaline loss. You can see I've bumped him all the way across the entire court from right wing to left corner. So... What is he gonna do? He's gonna walk me down, go up to the post fade, hit a very tight contest. Okay, crazy, obviously, right? Like that's stupid, isn't it? You're probably thinking it's a fluke. 
No, it happens every single time, bro. I'm talking like every single time. People are using their stick, rhythm shooting with it. They're hitting very tights every time, bro. Look at this, another tight, it's in. I mean, obviously I've talked to 2K about this. I've addressed this. Uh, plenty of other creators have also talked to 2K about this and I'm sure it's getting a patch eventually. But I mean, can we talk about this, fellas? This post scoring stuff currently as the game stands takes no skill at all. I mean, yes, you have to be able to time your shot at least a little bit as well. And I guess to be fair, there's a difference between being no skill and unguardable because what he's doing still takes some bit of skill, obviously, right? He's using rhythm shooting. He's hitting contested shots consistently, which is a very tough thing to do. I would argue that I couldn't hop on the game and be able to do this right away or anything like that you know it obviously takes some practice some understanding of it as you can see though fading into a double team where he beats me and my teammate goes to hot to help as well and we get a red on it so can the argument be made that there's skill involved in this you could say yes probably even more skill involved actually than me just doing the drop step mashing but again the point is that the, the the lack of skill gap doesn't mean that it's more unguardable like me doing that drop step mashing is much more guardable in comparison to this right here where you can see he actually does just miss that one so we get very fortunate i actually am showing you guys the game that we ended up winning in this and it took like seven tries against these guys i mean i was having this guy was having a field day bro i could really show you guys endless clips of this dude just hitting contested shot after contested shot after contested shot over and over again but we lucked out he missed and now we just turned up on offense. I mean, I would show this, but it's not really to the narrative of the video. So we're not really going to show the whole gameplay or anything like that. But you can see nice, just random cut, you know, uh, you can see the scoreboard go back up. If you want to like, you know, slow the video down, if you really care to see how me and Tanner ended up kind of thugging our way out through this game right here, <laughs> you can see that as well. But man, we put the absolute try hard pants on right here. You can see Tanner was hitting wide open, you know, open shots. You can see him really doing a lot more like uh, fading away and stuff like that, zigzagging back and forth while I'm crashing the rebound and stuff like that, which you could argue is also kind of toxic to be fair. But this obviously relies on him actually timing a real legitimate shot, you know, like regular dribble pull-ups and three-pointers. For whatever reason, the game seems to apply different logic to post fades than it does, you know, uh, dribble pull-ups and stuff like that. And just the logic of being able to hit contested shots on them is broken. It's absolutely stupid. So we end up lucking it out and winning right here. You can see Tanner drops 20 points on him on double locks. What an absolute game by him. And again, I would have shown it, but it's already a long video and it's not really to the narrative of the vid talking about the post scoring uh, skill gap and stuff. But either way, point guard, I mean, he hit like four reds, you know, that is tough, but I could show you multiple gameplays real quick. Like, I'll just cut to this gameplay and show you guys what happened, but I'm just gonna mainly just show the post fades and just fast forward through it. But like, look at this cheesy lineup. So they have a 6-7 that plays as a lock. And again, mind you, that you can hit this with almost any rating for that matter. So why even just fully invest into being a post scorer and do it when you could just be a lock and do it? So he's only a 92 overall, but as you can see, he's got, you know, 87 post control, 90 mid range. His, his close shot doesn't even show. And the big man right here has got 99 O board with good block and strength and all that. So let's just take you through this little cycle that we got put in right here. So Tanner's guarding him. You can see he jumps, gets a red, you know, it's like, dang, that's tough. I mean, that was good defense. You know, we didn't end up getting a stop right there. Now here's the problem, right? He does some nonsense like this. <laughs> and this is what you pray for. This is what you pray for against lineups like this. It's just dudes trying to, you know, go up with a cut on, on something like this where I get a contest, man. It's what you really like hope for them to do, you know, because that's stoppable. But guess what isn't this right here? You know, it's like, man, we get another red. Tanner's on him again right here. He's playing it really well, you know, playing to his front shoulder. I get the jump instead right there. Very tight. Boom. That's green. That's three in a row. It's three reds in a row right there. Now I'm guarding him. I'm jumping. As you can see, boom, that's four reds in a row. Uh, we're going with this again. You know, Tanner's on him. Boom. Jump. Almost block it. We get a fifth red in a row. He greens it. It's like, cool, that, that is just the most stupid thing in the world, bro. So again, I, I almost feel like having to bait them into going for a dunk on a cut like that or something is well worth, you know, trying to hawk a lane or something. But I don't know, man. I mean, I'll continue to show it, but you could see a yellow that time, which is like, oh boy, a yellow, <laughs> not going to do anything. A yellow right there as well. I mean, man, what an absolute tough scene on this stuff, bro. I mean, so we finally give him to miss, but mind you, again, it's going to be a 99 offensive rebound down there. And... I don't even know if that's necessarily making him miss. I don't even know if the, the red is like making that happen. I think it's just him mistiming it for that matter. Because it sure doesn't seem like a contest affects the green window on it at all. So 
I know a lot of y'all are gonna be like, dang Laker, that's toxic. You're coming out here showing the community how to do stuff like this. I mean, again, this is more just to really poke my finger at the people who think the post scoring stuff in this game takes skill. You could argue a lot of the stuff that I was doing on the, you know, the 1v1 court, that literally takes no skill. It's me holding my LT, tapping my X button toward my, you know, ball hand and drop stepping people and then just waiting it out, reading, you know, pump fake animations and stuff like that, waiting to see if the defender is going to jump out the way. And that's really nothing to it. I don't have to be a good player to do so. Now, the stuff that these guys are doing, I haven't done yet, you know? So I don't know if this does take skill or not. I, I really don't know if it's just people hitting ridiculous shots, you know, and like, and really getting some crazy stuff to go, or if this right here is actually just like the easiest thing in the world to hit and it takes no skill at all. So I don't know. I haven't done it myself, but what I do know is it probably takes a little bit more skill at least than just drop step mashing, but you can definitely argue that this is 10 times more unguardable than drop step mashing and people already think that that's unguardable i mean so it's a tough spot to say but i do have respect for the joeys and the tonics of the world that do a lot of like you know finesse post scoring stuff like that long range post fades post hops stuff like that you know hop jumpers and dribble pull-ups and stuff like that and the stuff that we were uh showing you guys tanner doing on here as well like the stretch bigs that i get more crafty and stuff you know or finesse post scores but at the end of the day can you really argue that those take skill when it's really just a lot of times you can just throw a lot of different moves together and make it look like you're doing something situational when really there are like four things you can do in the game that are unguardable that just you're just looking like you're trying to you know pull different tricks out of your bag to make it look like it's skillful it's tough to argue for man you know so it's tough i've been in the exact same position as you guys if you are post scores watching this video you know I've been in the situation in 2K21 next gen where meter like there wasn't even meter dunking It was just contact dunking. It was the easiest thing in the world and me as a slasher I felt so Demoralized by the fact that what I do and like to think that it was at one point hard to get to or maybe like took more finesse and talent and you know dribbling ability and then added add to that in the fact that there is like meter dunks added in the game eventually as well but in 21 it's like all you do is just run to the hoop and hold down on the stick and it was just gonna work out for you like more often than not for sure and it sucks seeing something that you value your skill set just be you know deteriorated into something that's just the easiest thing in the world to do i don't know but anyway i wanted to bring this to you guys just to have a nice little talking point on this you know discuss debate a little bit and i want to know what you think do you think that post scoring takes skill in 2k25 or do you not i'd like to think this is the most dominant post scores have been in a long time when you combine the drop step ability with the post fade cheese and stuff like that but honestly the truth to it is, if you have a good enough interior defense to counter it, the drop step mashing and stuff like that and just actual like standing close shots and stuff are actually contestable. Now this post fade glitch stuff that we're showcasing right here is not contestable at all. Like I'm gonna go to my Xbox clips real quick and just give a nice little example. So like right here, you know, I'm playing hands up D, hands up D, boom, go for the block. Right here, he's going up again, hands up D again. It's like, this is a, this is a post score, you know, like a dude with high close shot, but my interior defense actually counters that. There is a counter to it, you feel me? Like there's actually something in the game that I can do to contest that. But you can't argue the same thing for the close shot post fading and stuff like that. There really is no counter other than I'll show two clips. I'm going to search for them in my Xbox clips and I'll let you see it when I pull them up. All right. So I did say I had two of them, but I can only find one. So I'm going to just show this to you. But this one I, I was blessed with and I actually have got this, you know, two or three times for that matter where I time the jump really well and I get a snatch block on the post fade. <laughs> so that is a way to stop it. But can you depend on that? Absolutely not. And as you can see, I'm running the Hall of Fame post lockdown just to try and stop people like this. But I mean, man, you know, you know how great that makes you feel too when you're about to lose a 2v2 proving grounds game to somebody and instead you just get the snatch block on them and like, boom, now you get the ball back and you have an actual opportunity to score. But again, now you have to work for legitimate buckets rather than to just sit here and, you know, do some post fade spam and stuff like this. So I don't know, man, you guys be the judge of this. Let me know if you believe post scoring takes skill as present or I'd even argue, yes, I think post scoring will take skill again when this post pay, post fade glitch stuff gets taken out because besides this, I think everything else is respectably counterable depending on your ratings. I truly think until your defense can counter drop step spams and close shot mashing and stuff like that and standing dunk and all that type of stuff. And it can also even guard, you know, regular post fades and post tops and stuff and hooks. I would like to think hooks aren't even in a good place this year, if you ask me. But 
what is unguardable truly is the post fade glitch that we talked about so anyway that's all video i hope you all enjoyed if you did feel free to drop a like stuff you new time notice all that good stuff and like always try this one of 2000 likes if you made it to the end of the video put post in the comments search ports melee through or you could put defense if you would like as well or like d in the comments but anyway that's all vid let, let me know your opinions as well and other than that take these man peace